Hey everybody, we are going to be going through a series of array videos and this is the first one. This is the one that goes through some of the some of the concepts in Zybox. So we'll start with basic arrays and I'm going to show you in this, it's not going to be going through every single thing in arrays. I'm going to let you do that from Zybox. But I want to point out the important things that you really should spend some time on. Okay, for example, this first part that shows you how an array is created and how you can step through the array, right? As you iterate through an array. How many elements can an array have? If it has a capacity of four, that means this array has been created saying it can have four elements. We always start at zero. Okay, how many elements in memory does the array declaration create? It creates four. Okay, so go through some of these things, basics again. Keep in mind that we always start at zero. Here's the other thing that is very important. What is the index of the last element for the array that has a capacity of 100? Since we start at zero, the last element will never be at 100. It will be one less than that, so it will be at 99. You never want to go to that element because that is array out of range and you don't want to do that. So we're going to take a look at some of those things. Those are the important things that I want you to look at. Be aware of how to access each element. Okay. What do we do with an array? We always use a loop, right? You have a list of elements. We always use a for loop, a for loop and an array goes hand in hand. So you want to read something into an array, you use a for loop. You want to output the elements, you use a for loop. We always start at zero in the for loop. Now, this plus plus i or i plus plus, does it matter? No, it does not. So we will cover this in class on Tuesday. Okay, let's go to, so you can go through the rest of this. Iterating through arrays shows you how to go through an array, what to do with an array, array manipulation, what do you do with it? Okay, for example, here, here is a good program. Find the maximum in an array. Okay, so looking through this program, it is, it has a list of elements. It creates a list of, it creates a constant. Notice how the constant is a very important thing for an array. You cannot create an array with a variable in here. It has to be a constant. I prefer to put all my constants outside of main, although Zybooks keeps them inside. If you want the constant to be used throughout your function, you would put them outside of main throughout all your functions. So create an array of eight elements. This number cannot be a variable because we are creating our arrays as static arrays, okay? Meaning they are on the stack on in your memory. They are not a dynamic array, which you see in 162. Meaning when you create them, it allocates memory for eight elements continuously, contiguously, because the array elements go one after the other, you go I plus plus, notice? And so your array has to be contiguous and so it blocks a certain amount of memory. And then you can't quite increase or decrease the memory as you go through your program. It has to be done when your program is done. So when your program is running during runtime, we cannot quite change that, all right? So those are things that we see in 162. So you use a for loop to read the array elements then to find the maximum value, notice we have a max val, which will store the maximum value. Now you all know how to find the maximum um, value through a list of numbers. You've done this in 161a and we've done, we've done this. I've shown you a sample program uh, at the beginning of this term. But with a list of numbers, again, you set once you have read the elements into the array, you set the first value of the array to the maximum value. This, the first value is the largest. Do not set your max val to zero because if your list had negative numbers, then your max val would never find the largest negative number. The same with min val. If you set it to zero and if your list had negative numbers, it would never find the negative number as the smallest value. So you must always set it to the first value in the list, which is the largest so far, then you compare, you compare every element in the list with max val. And if there is an element that is greater than max val, then max val becomes that value. And then you keep going until you get to the end of the list. Okay, so this is a very important algorithm that you should look at because we uh, use that later in some of our assignments. So that will help you um, figure that out. 
accessing an array out of bounds. Make sure you look at this. You do not want to access an array out of range. Okay. So watch this video that talks about that out of bounds or will give you a segmentation fault on the server. And anytime you work with an array and you see a segmentation fault or core dumped, you can be assured that somewhere your array has gone out of bounds. Okay. Um, the other thing I want to point out is multiple arrays are nothing but parallel arrays. I have some videos on that. You can take a look at it. But I want to jump to the section where they talk about reversing an array. And there is a very good example, a debugging example of reversing an array. And I really want you to step through that because it talks about hand tracing code. Hand tracing code is very important, manual tracing when you work with arrays as to figure out why your array is not working. So this is an example where they have a list of elements and they try to reverse the whole thing, meaning without using extra arrays. You can't have another array and say, here, I'm going to copy from the end into the new array. You can't do that. You don't want to have another array because it's a waste of memory to have to create an array. Of course, here you only have eight elements, but you could have an array with 10,000 elements and you don't want to create another array. So we are going to use the existing array and we're going to try and swap values. So you swap the first and last value, then you move one closer and then you swap the next two values. You move one closer and you keep swapping until you get to the middle. But as you can see, they go through several iterations of this algorithm as they find that, you know, the first version doesn't work and you hand trace it and see why does it not work? Where does it not work? And so going through this whole exercise of trying to figure out why your algorithm doesn't work is a very important concept. And you don't want to stop halfway through saying, oh, it works. You want to go through the entire algorithm. Remember, we talked about this yesterday. You want to go through the entire loop to make sure that every element is being swapped until you get to the last one and make sure that the whole array looks good. And in order to do that, you will need to write it all out on paper as you're stepping through your algorithm. So drawing pictures and writing once you start working with an array is a very important thing to do. So I will see you in the next video where we will talk about manipulating elements of an array.